بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا الله we are asking you to guide us with the Quran to enlighten our heart with the Quran and to enlighten our path with the light of the Quran يا أرحم الراحمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, last time uh, we stopped at uh, Ayah 70 of Surah Yaseen. So inshallah, today we will go uh, on inshallah with Ayah 71 and on. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون we saw how in uh, the last ayahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, was uh, telling us that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was accused to be a poet, was never a poet. And the Quran is not magic. The Quran is the, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we saw how uh, we have what we call infi'al wal mawajid and this term means that um, if someone who is not even a Muslim and who listens to the Quran sometimes the heart would uh, shake sometimes the heart would be touched so the eyes would start to tear even if that person knows nothing about the quran even if that person understands nothing in the quran even if that person does not know any arabic word still there is something that got into his heart so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now continuing and he is reminding people do they not see that we have created for them cattle? So they are the owners of them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the cattle, grazing livestock. Al-maz, al-ba'an, al-ibil, al-baqar. Goat, sheep camels and cows. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created these cattle and this thing by itself is a blessing. So what happens? These are the uh, things that Allah has created to help the human living. So, فَهُمْ لَهَا مَالِكُونَ is that they are the owners of these cattle. And this by itself is another blessing. So creating these cattle is one blessing. Getting man to own them is another blessing. So why they don't think about that? We did what we did, we did for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything for man to use. So the word ma amilat, mimma amilat aydina means that Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who created them. He didn't get any help. So these cattle, they are helpful for man. He drinks the milk. He uses the uh, skin. He uses everything he he uh, he does his uh tent out of them if what what happens to them to these cattle allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only created them 
But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have tamed and subdued these cattle for, for the man. فَمِنْهَا رَكُوبُهُمْ وَمِنْهَا يَأْكُلُونَ So that some of them, some of these cattle are for riding and some are for eating, for slaughtering. What does the word ذَلَّلْنَاهَا mean? ذَلَّلْنَاهَا is, uh, you know that some animals are tamed and you can uh, have them in your house. You can have them in your farm, but some animals are not. So the tamed ones, you can have a goat, you can have a sheep, you can have a camel, you can have a cow, you can have a cat, you can have a dog, you can have all these things. But what about those that are not tamed, that are not subdued? Those are some animals like the snake, the alligator, the wild animals. We can hunt them, we can use them, but they are not subdued, they are not tamed. So Allah has created everything, all the animals, the cattle, everything for, for man to use while they are alive or while they are dead. While they are alive, they can get the milk, they can uh, make butter, they can make cheese. And when they are alive, they can use the skin, they can, use the, uh, they can eat the meat, and uh, they can use the bones and, and everything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on and says, وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا مَنَافِعُ وَمَشَارِبُ أَفَلَا يَشْكُرُونَ and they have other benefits from them. And they get to drink from them. Will they not be grateful? Let's dig in into this amazing ayah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, لَهُمْ فِيهَا مَنَافِعَ There are so many benefits of these animals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. وَمَشَارِبْ so from the female of these animals, we get the milk. And some, so some people say, okay, what are the benefits of the male then? We don't get any milk. Okay, but without the male, the, uh, the females would not have the babies and we would not have the milk. So the male are the origin of everything. So... وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا مَنَافِعُ وَمَشَارِبُ Now, if we take the following two words, أَفَلَا يَشْكُهُونَ will, will they not be grateful? What's the meaning of the word shukr? If we want to identify this word. So, a shukr, as mentioned in Matharatul Qulub, which was written by an amazing Mauritanian scholar, the, the definition of the word shukr, الشكر صرف العبد ما أولاه مولاه من نعماه في رضاه. It's that the servant would direct everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, everything to the to use it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything. And if we look at uh, this shukr, we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and he has uh, given us all types of blessings. And we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything. 
We have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the good health. We have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having good neighbors. We have to ask uh, to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having parents. We have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the benefits that he has given us. And normally, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only in uh, ease times. The real thanking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes during difficulties and calamities. When, when we have a problem, when we face a calamity, when, whether any type of calamities, and there are countless calamities in this dunya. So whenever we face any, any of these calamities, we have immediately to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for several reasons. First of all, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the calamity was not bigger. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, this, that this calamity was not in our faith, was not in our deen. The test was not in our iman. Anything in this dunya comes and go. But the, real, but the real problem, the real test is that our faith is affected. Other than that, all calamities will go. Time will uh, uh, make everything okay again. Um, people will forget about other things that happen to them. People will forgive people for any bad things that they have done to them. But the main thing is that the test was not in our faith and in our Iman. So when we have this in mind, we say, Alhamdulillah, Ashukru Lillah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلَئِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you thank me, then I will increase you. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing that he is going to highly reward us. When we have a blessing, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't ever think that it's your work who got you where you are. It's the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he facilitated for you to be where you are, to gain what you gained, to have what you had. So be thankful to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I have, I want to share with you a hadith in which uh, we have the real reward for those who thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith says, I will say it in Arabic and translate it. يخرج قوم من قبورهم يوم القيامة إلى أبواب الجنات. So a group of people would go up directly from their graves to the gates of Jannah. يوقفهم رضوان So Ridwan, the, uh, the one who keeps the door of Jannah, he's in, the angel who keeps the door of Jannah, he would stop them. إلى أين تذهبون? Where are you going? كيف تدخلون الجنة وأنتم لم ينشر لكم ديوان ولم ينصب لكم ميزان? How would you get into Jannah while you haven't been scaled? Your actions were not scaled yet, are not scaled yet. So what would they say? قالوا يا رضوان نحن لا نقف لنصب ميزان ولا لنشر ديوان يا رضوان أوما قرأت القرآن So they say Oh رضوان we don't stop we, we, uh, scales will not be for us haven't you, haven't you heard? Haven't you heard what the Quran says? So Rudwan would ask, يقول, What's in the Quran? So they would answer, 
يقولون نحن أهل الصبر إنما يوفى الصابرون أجرهم بغير حساب So they would say we are the people of patience And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Zumar in uh, uh, people who practice patience in dunya will, will have their reward without any reckoning. So he asked them, Qala kayfa kana sabrukum? How did you practice patience? Qalu nahnu kunna idha usi'a ilayna ghafarna. So they said, if people used to uh, do bad things to us, to, uh, to mistreat us, we will forgive them. وَإِذَا جُهِلَ عَلَيْنَا حَلِمْنَا And if we were um, uh, oppressed, then we would, we would practice patience. وَإِذَا بْتُلِينَا صَبَرْنَا And if we were tested, we would practice patience. وَإِذَا أُعْطِينَا شَكَرْنَا And if we were given, then we are thankful. And this is my example. وَإِذَا أُعْطِينَا شَكَرْنَا So if we are given, and tell me who is not given in this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us lots of things that we take for granted. If he takes only one of them, then we would feel the importance, we would feel how valuable that thing is. We can walk. If someone had an accident and uh, his uh, legs were amputated, then he would not be able to walk again. then he would know the blessings, the, the meaning, the benefit of having, of having the legs. So what would Rudwan tell them? So get into Jannah, you will, you will be highly rewarded and everything will be for you to be pleased. So that's why when we, when we see lots of people of Allah, friends of Allah, when they have a test, they would say, Marhaban bi shi'ari salihin. Welcome. This is the reward for the righteous people. So we need just to think. We need to contemplate. We need to reflect. Allah has given us everything we need. And if he has taken some things, then that, that doesn't mean that he deprived us. No. He wants to see what we are going to do. Are we going to be thankful? Or are we going to, to be upset with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Just get connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of ease so he will give you the power to overcome the times of difficulty. And you can teach your children these valuables. These are very important lessons in life that we have to instill in our children. First of all, we have to practice them. We have to be the model. If they see us doing it, then they will know that this is the right thing. But if they see that the parents are not happy with whatever Allah de decrees for them, they are not happy with whatever, they, are not, they do not accept whatever Allah is testing them with, then of course, who, who, who will be blamed? The parents. The parents who did not plant the good seeds, how can they uh, pick up the fruits? There won't be any fruits. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, أَفَلَا يَشْكُرُونَ we have to be careful. We have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created all the bounties for us in this dunya. He created the skies. He created the earth. He created the sun, the moon, the light, the rain, the wind, everything. And everything was subjugated, was subdued for serving the human being. But what did some people do? وَاتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ آلِهَةً لَعَلَّهُمْ يُنصَرُونَ And they have taken beside Allah false gods, hoping perhaps that they would be helpful. That they would be helped by these gods. Actually, these gods need to be helped. They would take a statue as a god, but if that statue fell down, it will break. So it needs the man who is worshipping this idol, they need him to get, uh, to, to fix them. And because they are helpless, they do not help themselves. How can they help others? So, just think. Shaitan would whisper to righteous people just to deviate them from the right path. But if he can't, if he cannot, he will do anything, anything that will make them just not go astray, but shift a little bit. How? He would, he would whisper them that, okay, you can do this very good uh, deed which would get you closer to Allah and you will be famous. Everybody will talk about you. So what happens? What happens? There is an associate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be careful. Do not associate anything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let all your actions be for the sake, only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not for fame, not for people to talk about, not so that people would say, oh, this one is so-and-so, is, is a great person. No. Just always, whatever you do, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gave you the ability to do it and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it. Pure for his sake. Pure intentions. I'm not going to do it for anyone except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ آلِهَةً لَعَلَّهُمْ يُنصَرُونَ لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون. But what will happen? They are not able to help them. They will all be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you remember, uh, when Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam broke all the gods, all the stones that his people were worshipping, the people said, burn him and support your gods. Why? Because the gods themselves could not support themselves. They will not be able to help them. And what will happen? Shaitan at the end... Shaitan will say, I, I, am, I am going away. You never know. Allah is so angry today. I am fleeing away. You, I just said a few words and you followed me. It's enough what, what he will face. He doesn't want, he, he, what he did is that he left all people away. He disassociated from everyone. 
So everyone is going to be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who followed each others in dunya, they will say, oh, we are away. We, we are disassociating from you. We don't want to see you. We, it's enough what we are going to, to face. So the first thing they do, they would disassociate from them in the Akhirah and they will not uh, give victory to each other. They will not support each other. And that's the uh, meaning of, when, of, of the eyes when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَنَاصَرُونَ بَلْ هُمُ الْيَوْمَ مُسْتِسْلِمُونَ Why are you not helping each other? Indeed, they are in surrender. Allah says in Surah Al-Safat, أُحْشُرُوا الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا وَأَزْوَاجَهُمْ وَمَا كَانُوا يَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَهْدُوهُمْ إِلَى صِرَاطِ الْجَحِيمِ so gather those who committed wrong and their, and their kinds and those who followed them and guide them all to the way that would lead to Jahannam. How can uh, someone help another? Helping people or supporting others should have two conditions. So the first one is uh, ability. And the second one is power. So if you want to support someone, first of all, you need to have the ability to support him, that person. And then you should be in a position that gives you enough power to be able to do it. If someone needs anything from the government, you should go to the people of the government, not to anyone ordinary or uh, similar to him. No, that would not, they don't have the power. So when this happens, what happened? They refused to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They refused to believe in Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They refused to believe in the message. And that, and that has uh, yeah, made, that made Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam feel sorry. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to him, فَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ قَوْلُهُمْ فَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ قَوْلُهُمْ So let not their speech then grieve you, Muhammad. إِنَّا نَعْلَمُ مَا يُسِرُّونَ وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ Indeed, we know what they conceal and what they declare. So how? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, out of his mercy to people, he knows that they are not following him. He knows that they are belying him. And they, they, they harmed him. They harmed his uh, companions. People of Quraysh were so bad to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what happened? Once the, uh, uh, the angel told him, Ya Rasulullah, let me crush them. And he said, Allah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala get of them or of their uh, offsprings someone who would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never made dua against his people. He always made dua for them to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He made dua for them that 
the, they would see the light, that they would follow the message, they would accept what he has come with. So what happens? So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam felt sorry that he did not get what he wished that all his people would become uh, Muslims. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comforting him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him, فَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ قَوْلُهُمْ Don't feel grieved that they did not believe you. And we have so many ayahs in the Quran that is just a comfort to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never send a messenger then let him down. And the victory that, that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got by conquering Mecca was the, the amazing thing that happens that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Islam victorious. And it will be victorious until the day of judgment. So some people at the time of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, were, were brave enough to stand up and to face Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and to say, we will not believe in you. So those were known to everybody. But there were some people who were hypocrites. They did not want to believe in Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But at the, um, at the same time, they want him to believe that they believe, they believe in him. So they, they said the belief words in their tongues, but their hearts were full of non-belief. And these are the munafiqeen. These are the hypocrites. And the hypocrites were way dangerous than the non-believers. Because when you know there is someone who is a non-believer, then khalas, you know that, you know what, uh, you know what uh, harm will come from that person. But when you think that someone is a believer and deep inside he mocks and he plots and he does things against the Muslims, those are the dangerous people. But Allah is saying to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna na'lamu ma yusirruna wa ma yu'alinun. We know. We know who is truthful in his iman. We know who is truthful in his belief. We know what the hearts have. We are the ones, we are the ones who can differentiate between those who are following you truly and those who are cheating you. Nowadays in this dunya, there's so many people with several faces. You would think that they are, they love you. You would think that they like you. But the minute you turn away and go away, they will start cheating. They will start uh, uh, saying words that they will never th say when you are present with them. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from these people. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us stand firm. And to, we ask him that 
their mocking, their plotting would not affect us. But even those non-believers, deep inside, deep in their heart, they know that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was truthful. They know that he was trustworthy, a trustworthy peer person. They know that he never lied. They know that he was an, an important person. They know that everything he says is truthful. They know that if they wanted to hide anything valuable, if they want to hide their, their money, there was no banks. They would give it to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if you remember, on the day Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated to Medina, he left behind Sayyidina Ali in his place. And one of the reasons was that Sayyidina, Muhammad, that Sayyidina Ali would give the trustees that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, had in his home for each and every person in, uh, uh, of those non-believers who they used to give him their valuable things to hide it with him. So deep inside, they know that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was truthful. And they know that he would never say a lie. So when he called them, oh people, I have something to tell you. I, I, if I, if I, so the, the people gathered and he said, if I tell you there is an army behind this mountain that is going to raid on you, would you believe me? And they said, yes, we will believe you. And he said, I am warning you against something that you have, you have not paid attention, that something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered you to warn you against, which is the day after. After you die, there will be resurrection. Your deeds, you will be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There will be resurrection. There will be scaling. There will be reckoning. So get prepared for that. From this point, enmity started. Those who were afraid about their positions did not want to believe in Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu those who were afraid that they will be equal to the poor people did not want to believe in Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Those who were afraid that they, the, the servant and the master will be on the same level did not want to believe in Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu But deep inside, they know and they are 100% sure that they are, that this is a truthful message. So we go back to the previous ayahs when he, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Afala yashkurun. Why they don't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's not only for the people for the previous people, this is for us. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes to hear the, the voice of the person whom he loves. So, the first thing when we want to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say, Ya Rabbana lak alhamd. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No matter how we thank him, we still don't know how to thank him. 
Because no matter how we praise him, he deserves more. And this is why Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Allahumma la nuhsi tana'an alayka anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. We cannot praise you the way you deserve to be praised. And one of the forms of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the way, there are countless forms that you can use to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can simply say, Alhamdulillah. You can say, Ashkurillah. But there is one form that one of the uh, the angels did not know how to record it when one of the righteous people say it, uh, said it. So they heard one of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying the, the form, the, the form of thanking, and I'm going to say it right now. So they went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they said, Ya Allah. Your servant so and so said, Ya Rabbi, laka alhamdu kama yambaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Thanks is for you, Allah. Thanks is suitable to the grace of your face and the greatness of your supreme authority. Ya Rabbi, laka alhamdu kama yambaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. So they said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, we know that if a person says so, so and so, we give him this much hasanat, this much good deeds. If a person says so and so, we give him this much. But we don't have this form. We don't, it's not in the catalog. How, how, much, how much good deeds to, to tell him, to, to write for him? He says, Uktubuha kama qalaha wa ana ajzihi biha. Write it as is, as he said it, and I will reward him for that. And this is considered one of the highest forms of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to say it again, and you can repeat with me. Ya Rabbi, laka alhamdu, kama yambaghi li jalali wajhika. وعظيم سلطانك يا ربي لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك and it's out of the bounties of Allah سبحانه وتعالى that he guided us to know these things and this is one of the blessings that we have to thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى So just think of the main things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having the time to reflect on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us is a blessing. Having the time to have the intention to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the intention. Having in mind that the, our main goal in this dunya is to be with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the akhirah, in the day after, is a blessing. So we have to work for that. We have to get prepared to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And having this in our mind that we want to get prepared, we want to do our best, this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for choosing you to listen, to understand, to have the intention, and to do what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are all blessings. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has chosen you out of the millions and billions and billions and billions of people whom he has created. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always consider us 
of the chosen ones because the chosen ones are saved from the whispering of shaitan. We want to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safely. We want to be there and we want to, or our aim and goal is to be, to receive our records in our right hands, to go directly to Al Firdaus Al A'la, to be with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is our goal in this dunya to be good and to receive good, inshallah. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم إن شاء الله next week we will finish سورة ياسين and we will start with another series إن شاء الله immediately after سورة ياسين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته